Hey guys, I'm Matt Hernandez. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna to talk about what gear I take with me on an everyday basis. Okay, so we're not gonna go over cameras and lenses. I did that recently in a different video that is the top five things that you need to start your sports portrait photography career because I only have two cameras and two lenses, so it's not that complicated. So if you wanna watch that video, then we will link that down below in the description. Make sure you check it out. Today, we're just gonna be talking about lighting equipment and lighting gear. So the lights I use, the stands, and the modifiers. So you can see I have three bags here. We've got a think tank. I believe it's called the production manager. It's the biggest one that they have. And then we have the stand manager here, I believe is what it's called. I could be wrong on those names. I probably should have looked that up before we started the video, but, but they're, they're, it's pretty obvious what they are. I know this one is specifically for stands and this, this one's pretty much for anything. It can, it can hold modifiers, it can hold lights, it can hold stands, whatever. But I use it just for modifiers because I have several that I, what I, that I take with me. One of the things that I've noticed over the years is it's, it seems like it happens every single time. When I have a shoot, if I think about something that I want to use or that I, that I don't normally use, and then I think, well, I'm, I'm not going to take it. I won't need it. Or, or maybe I take something out of my bag. It's almost inevitable I end up needing it on the shoot. So I just started taking everything that I use on a semi-regular basis with me. So let's start with the lights first, though. So I have, so we have a Westcott bag here also. And I have six FJ 400s. Oop, that's not the one we want. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and talk about that. So they have a glass dome over the flash head here, over the flash tube. I have two that don't have that, and I took them off specifically so that I, because I have a, a, one modifier that's not Westcott, that's from my old bronze color days, that that will fit the light when I take the uh the, the 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 glass dome off so that's why i've got two without that but most but the other four have are just as they come like this battery goes in the back uh, these are 400 watt seconds a lot of you probably are very familiar with these i talk about them all the time they're pretty much the only lights that i use besides the fj 200 i also have an fj 80 that i've only i've used it a couple of times in a very unique situation but most of the time these are my workhorses these are what I take with me all the time. I, the 200s, if I need an extra couple lights, I need eight lights maybe specifically, I'll bring them with me. Otherwise, they stay in the studio. So 400 watt seconds, and they, they can overpower the sun outside so you can underexpose the background, and especially when you have a deep focus reflector on them. So, I mean, for the price, the best strobe you can get, I think. So we've got six of those. A lot of people make the mistake of not having enough strobes. Things can happen. I've had these hit with softballs and other sports equipment broken in the middle of the shoot. So it's good to have backups. That's why I have so many. I don't normally use all six. Sometimes I do, but, but normally it's you know one or two, but you, know, you want extra and you want to bring the extra with you just in case. Okay, <clears throat> here's the 200. Even though I don't always bring these with me, I'll go ahead and show it to you. So they're, they're significantly smaller, obviously see the difference here they're a little bit deceiving because they're 200 watt seconds versus 400 so you would think automatically well that's half the power which technically it is but it's actually a one stop less so it's kind of it's kind of confusing so in other words if the fj 400 is at eight out of nine because it had has nine stops of power then this light at full power would be the same right so here's the uh the bracket that attaches to the tripod or to the light stand that you screw on the bottom there. So these are these are convenient because you can put them in your light bag. So if you're a photojournalist or or you're trying to just go real light, at, you know you can put this in your bag, not have to carry extra stuff around with you. Maybe just a modifier by itself. But you know that so that they're 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 good for very specific reasons, and they can be used outside. But I like to be able to overpower the sun, so I use the other ones more. But it's good to have these two. They're not quite as expensive. They're not quite as expensive, so. It's, it's a good backup option also for, you know, if, or if you have to travel light. Okay, so in my Westcott bag here, also I have, I have one little old policy buff stand that, I, that has never broken, so I still have it. And it's basically just little, they have, Westcott has versions of this. Other, other, there's other people that have light stands like this that, that aren't, you know, 
super heavy duty or anything like that this thing has just it's lasted forever it's good to have these to put on the back of like on behind a player maybe like on the stands to light up the bleachers or something like that or in a small area where a big light stand's not going to fit but so i would take this with me too probably be a good idea to have a couple of those so these are just these are just medium you know nothing crazy they're sturdy but not super heavy so they can blow over if they have a big modifier on them that you know you're not going to want to put like a seven foot umbrella on these probably but there that's what it looks like with the fj 400 on it okay so we're going to go ahead, go ahead and throw a battery on the back here just so you can see the whole the whole rig here so that's what that looks like on that medium to small light stand I, if i was just using this silver reflector i'd probably use a stand like this or maybe a deep focus um speaking of the deep focus these increase the light power quite a bit. I use these outside to, to underexpose backgrounds to take action shots with with athletes. It's going to be hard light because there's no diffusion. So you get a really high output with these because of the silver interior and the 45 degree angle and the depth of the modifier. So there, you can throw a lot of light in one direction, which is good for athletes moving around when you're trying to to make a dark dramatic background so i have four five of these and you can tell i've gotten my money's worth because they are very beat up but i have five just in case you never know when you might need to double up and then one got bent so you know there you go so five but they're but they're not super expensive so like i said it's good to have it's good to have more just in case okay so i have two of these light stands in the bag here along with that little mini one. We've also got some gels in here. These are just regular sheet gels, old school that you can use a, a magnet that comes with the FJ400. So you just put this on the front of the light with the seven inch reflector and you can put a sheet of gel in between there. So those come with the lights. I always keep several of them with me. So let's go ahead and move on to the other stands now. So I have, I have those two medium stands and then I have two C stands with boom arms and then two Avenger stands. And I actually don't know what model Avenger stands those are. I'm gonna have to figure that out because it's rubbed off the, uh, the, the uh, sticker because I've had them for so long, but I do know that they used to have wheels on them and I took the wheels off and everybody always asks me about these, but we will find them. We will find the, the actual model number and put them in the description. This is what they look like. I've had these for a long time. But they're really nice because they're, they're heavy duty. They, they, they're not light, so they're not, gonna, they're not gonna blow over nearly as easy as that kind of stand would. They're, it's like in between those black stands and a C stand. So I have two of these. And then we'll go ahead and put a C stand together too real quick. So there's the feet. Always put the big leg on the inside. So it counters the weight if you're gonna boom it over the middle. So these are impact C stands and I got them on Amazon several years ago. I think they sell newer now is the brand which they look, they look exactly the same as these. So and they, all, they have really good reviews. I don't think there's much difference. It doesn't look like it. I'm probably gonna get a couple of those because I need more, but, um, but I'll probably link the newer stands in the description just because that's what Amazon sells now. And you can look on B&H also to see if there's anything different. Okay, so here's the boom arm. This is the way that I put it together. So we're gonna put the weight camera right on this side, and then the light will go here and over that big leg just to counter the weight so that it doesn't fall over. So I have two of those, two of the other Avenger stands, and that's all that goes in this bag. Sometimes I'll put tripods in there, like for my camera, uh, but it's pretty much just those silver stands, and it, it weighs quite a bit with just with those four. All right, now let's look in the modifier bag. Okay, so my new favorite modifier of all time is the Manny Ortiz Beauty Dish. I used to use the Joe Grimes. We'll actually start with the Joe Grimes because that's smaller and work our way up. Okay, so I have two of these. 
I have the silver and the white. The silver is going to be more specular. It's going to have a little bit higher of an output. I grab the silver there. They have diffusion on them, so you know either one's going to be good. They've got this little deflector plate, which is what that's what a beauty dish does. It you put the deflector plate in the middle here. So the light attaches, I don't have a speed ring on this, but the light attaches here. So then it fires in here and this, this spreads out the light across the whole modifier. And then the diffusion goes on the outside like this. I have grids for both of them. I have two grids. If you want to focus the light, it'll focus it in 45, I think 40 or 45 degree angle. So like I said, I've got one of each of those. I'll typically use the white inside and the silver outside. Usually just because if I'm outside, I'm probably going to want to underexpose the background a little bit. That's why I use the silver. You can take the diffusion on or off. This makes it softer. You also lose power. So keep that in mind. All right. So here's the Manny Ortiz. So I've got the white interior. They have silver for this also. It goes together the same way as the Joe Grimes. The deflect deflector plate pops in. And then you push it down. And then you attach the diffusion. They have grids for this. I don't have one, but, you know, that would be nice. Um, I probably will get one in the future. I don't currently have one, but so this this is just super soft. It's bigger. It's just it's the sweet spot. I think I love it. I've, I've got it about two months ago, and I've used it probably ninety percent of the time on portraits since I got it. It's awesome. Absolutely love the design. There's there, I love the design of it. There's some something about the deepness of it. It just gives off beautiful light. It's amazing. So you can see the two compared here. So this one's good for smaller spaces. This one's gonna be a little bit softer. It's gonna put out more light also. Flexi gels. I have two bags of these, which I have a video on these also. Um, we'll link that also in the description if you wanna check that out. I compare these to regular sheet gels, old school gels, and just show you the differences of them um, and show you how to use them, a few different ways to use them. So there's eight different colors. You put these over the glass dome of the FJ400. just like that, and then you've got a different color light. So I have two one by threes and two one by fours. The one by fours are just bigger. This is the one by three. They have grids also to focus the light more. I use these as edge lights. There's two layers of diffusion, silver interior. So we've got an inner baffle and outer baffle so it can be really soft. Or you can take all of the diffusion out. These just snap out. And then the light can just fire through there. It gives you a higher output, more specular with that silver interior. So you can get different looks or different power levels. Like this is good for scooting back for like in a gym to take action shots of a basketball player. You can get a higher output and scoot the, back, the light back further if you take out the diffusion. It does make the light a little bit harder. Not quite as hard as this, but so it's kind of in between there. So I usually take the one by fours with me. Um, sometimes I'll take the one by threes. It just depends. Normally I'm not going to use all four unless I know specifically I'm going to, then I'll do that. But. Normally, I just have the one by fours with me. So this is the bigger one. This is the second biggest modifier that I've got. It's the Octa L. So it's a similar shape. It's 48 inches, so it's bigger, obviously. Again, bigger to the light, light modifier, the softer the light. So it goes together. Same way, these little spokes here, just go over the centerpiece, pops in, and then you've got two layers of diffusion here, like the strip boxes, and then my diffusion's kind of messed up here. We'll get it put together here so you can see how big it is. So I, I love this modifier also, and I do use it quite a bit, but if, if you don't have an assistant and it's windy, there is a chance it will blow over. And it's harder to deal with because it's bigger. So like there's, there's, um, there's, certain, there's certain times that you just can't use it because it's too big. So let's compare it to the Manny Ortiz. So there you go, 48 and 36. So it's just a little bit harder to deal with, but gives off really great light. All right, so that is just about it. So I've got diffusion in here for different modifiers, and then that's actually diffusion for my last modifier that I use on a regular basis, 
and that is the seven foot parabolic umbrella. Silver, I have a white one and I have four silvers. So you can put that diffusion, I'm not gonna do it because that would be, we don't have enough room for that um, on camera here, but just, it's just a white diffusion cloth, just like the other ones, but it goes, it attaches over the outside of this. That is, I think those come extra. They're not with the, with the umbrella, but this is one of my favorites too, because it can be super soft light, but it also is great for like team pictures and I do a lot of those. So I put two of these side by side and then, you know, like, I don't know, probably five to eight feet from the, from the team. And then, you know, you get a really great quality of light with these because they're nice and big and you put two of them together that it's really nice light. So just like an old fashioned umbrella. If you try to use them outside, good luck. I used to do that and they turn into wind sails pretty easy. You need an assistant with these if you're gonna use them outside. They will tear up quicker like that too because of the wind, but it can be done. You'll just go through them a little bit faster. So like I said, I have one white interior that's a little bit softer, doesn't have quite as high of an output, and then four of these with silver. And I have diffusion for all of them. All right. So we've just got some random stuff like the speed rings here for the FJ200s. So the, so the rapid box switch series allows you to change out from Westcott, allows you to change out the speed ring. So you can put the 200 or the 400. So you can see they're not the same size. This goes with the FJ400, this goes with the FJ200. So I keep the extra speed rings with me for the other modifiers in my modifier bag just in case I need to switch. And that looks like that's about it. So I have other stuff. I use pro light mods every now and then. I've got other deep umbrellas that are a little bit smaller that are more, I think they're like 42 inches or 40. Yeah, I think 42 inches maybe. Um, but, th but this, this is the, the, the nuts and bolts of what I use regularly. If I take all this stuff with me, then I'm pretty sure that I've got what I need on a shoot. I use V-flats like that's behind me every now and then in the studio, that kind of thing. But I've also got bigger soft boxes. I've got three by fours and two by threes. But those, I would rather use like the Manny Ortiz than something like that. That's just a little bit too big to be taking out on location, I think. So I use those in the studio or in an inside environment more. Like the three by fours are great for pro light mods to put behind people. But again, that's, that, those are more of a special occasion type thing. So. so that's it. So like I said, we'll put everything down below in the description. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, make sure that you, uh, that you hit the like button and subscribe and hit the bell so you know when I post new videos because there's gonna be a lot more content to come. We'll see you again next time.